probably in many of you have seen the signs in front of people's walkways. It's like, please don't park me in. I'd like to be able to get out into the street or whatever. I've heard a few people say that they are concerned about access that emergency vehicles might have because their blocks are so seriously parked up, as it were. As we've been talking to people, residents in some neighborhoods have also suggested to us that they have some concern about unfamiliar people um, who are parking in their neighborhoods overnight. This has been a concern with uh, increased focus that we've had with crime and vandalism that people have brought this forward. So it's with those ideas uh, that we have begun to bring forward the proposal that we have. And currently we just have a patchwork of residential parking rules, as it were. Currently, if you want to change the parking on your block, if you are a homeowner, you can petition your uh, neighbors and pay the fee and get the parking regulations changed on your block. If you walk down 17th Street, for example, on one side of the street there are no regulations. On the other side of the street, a couple of houses have got two-hour parking and a couple of houses have no parking in front of them. And that's all because the residents were able to organize and if there's only two houses, on your, two houses on your block, you don't have to do a whole lot of getting people together to do that. The task that we had, and this is very critical um, for everybody here to understand, is that the task was to address the concerns generated, expressed to us, when people who don't live in the neighborhood are parking on the streets for a long period of time. That's the task that was given to the Neighborhood Revitalization Commission. It's been in our action plan for over two year, for over a year now. It was included in part of the neighbor of the mayor's neighborhood implementation plan as well. It, but it's important to recognize that these ideas, and I'm using that convention if it's capitalized, I'm shouting at you. Uh, these are proposals, these are ideas, these are concepts. Um, were generated by members. Fran introduced you to us all, who were members of the Neighborhood Revitalization Commission and the Municipal Parking Board. They are not the ideas of the mayor, and he's already distanced himself justifiably from these ideas, and they have never been approved by the city council. Council members were aware that this was going to happen, that we were going to put these out for public hearing, but they've never been endorsed by anybody beyond this group. Uh, the Neighborhood Revitalization Commission meets on June 2nd. Uh, maybe we'll have something to bring forward then, and then again, maybe in 2021. And then there will be another joint meeting of the Municipal Parking Utility Board and the NRC to move forward from there. These proposals had some um, rationale. Uh, we wanted to improve livability. This has been uh, the whole focus of the Neighborhood Revitalization Commission. But we really did want to be simple and fair about the whole thing. Uh, a couple of times we heard folks say, well, why did it have to just be in my neighborhood? Uh, and so we thought, well, we'll see what happens if we try to apply similar kind of ideas all over the city. Uh, we did get feedback from neighborhood associations. Uh, if you look up here, we've got eight established neighborhood associations in across. Um, we got feedback from five of them, I think. And as you can imagine, not all of them were in agreement. You know, everybody said, yeah, there are some problems. I don't think the problems are as severe in my neighborhood or as they are in others. People said, you know, alternate side parking is going to be a real issue. You need to really be aware of that. Um, and other people have said, I would be so grateful for whatever we think you could provide to the sense that I have that my street has become computer computer parking lot. So these are the people that we talked with. And again, I do not want to give the impression that we have unanimous support from these groups. We talked to them. We tried to get ideas from them about what do you think you need to have in your neighborhood um, and that we will move forward from that. We wanted to be simple. You know, we can put a sign up at the entrance of the city and say this is what happens like we do. Um, I am very amenable to the suggestion that that's my use this way and not simple. It's obviously it's a more complicated problem. Uh, the whole notion that providing more access for city services, uh, we thought it was a bonus. That's not the central feature of any of this. Although you can see that when you put your leaves out at the curb, if there are people parked there, that obviously that people that were going to come to pick them up can't do that. Uh, so that does interfere with some of the services that the taxpayers of La Crosse are paying for and in some cases not being able to take advantage of because there are car cars parked in front of them. We do intend for implementation to begin in Zone A that's roughly equivalent to the neighborhood areas that we call Jenna Grandview Emerson Neighborhood Association, which is largely east of this campus. 
the Goose Young Campus Neighborhood Association, which basically goes from this campus to the western campus, and then two other neighborhood associations, Washburn and the Palpo Hamilton. The issues are somewhat different, but the parking congestion is similar in all those neighborhoods. Every parcel will receive two parking permits, and we review a number of other cities where there are UW campuses, as well as other cities who have enacted restrictions on residential parking. Um, and so these ideas that we got came from a conglomeration of our review of the literature, as it were. There are lots and lots of examples out there. Lacrosse, I believe, is the only of the UW system cities where there's a UW University that does not have some kind of parking regulation in the campus area. The other one is Green Bay, but they are out in the country, so it doesn't really apply to them. So a third permit will be issued at a cost of $50, and we were thinking that the limit would be three for each uh, parcel. It would be valid for that city block on which the parcel is located. I don't know if you all are aware, but we already have residential parking permits. Individuals who live in areas that are already zoned two-hour parking can have a permit to park in front of their houses um, when they need to be there, when they need to use the street, and that has been sort of the basis of this city block upon which it is located. <laughs> if you have a permit and you can park overnight as long as you want on the alternate side of the street, and you have unlimited parking in the two-hour zone. So this is what the parking permit gets you um, in terms of those residential districts. The regulations that we came up with, the proposal, was no overnight parking. That's 11 to 7 without a residential parking permit. Basically, this addresses the concern of people in my neighborhood that I don't know, I don't know what they're doing there, I don't know what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, this is a, a concern about crime and other things going on. Uh, it probably should say their guests as well, because residents will have up to three permits that they could use for themselves or for their guests. And we assumed that most people would be um, aware that in cities where they implement residential permits, any kind of regulation, that there are always exemptions. You know, when I go visit my son in Milwaukee, for example, um, my son is not in Milwaukee, my son is in D.C. When I hear people talking about going to visit their friends in Milwaukee, I got my story mixed up. Thank you for, um, anyway, I got it. When I hear people talking about visiting their friends in Milwaukee, they simply say, if I'm going to stay overnight, what I do is call up and then the people who are patrolling that area know that my car will be there. You know, we're not um, trying to make it so that you can't go to grandma's or grandma can't come to your house for Christmas. You know, we're thinking this would facilitate some of the delivery of city services. Again, this is not critical. This would be a bonus of the um, approach. Um, and we have increased fines actually to be more consistent with the fines at UW Lacrosse. Cross. A number of people have reported to us that they'll take the chance of getting a ticket on the streets because it was only $12. If you get a fine for parking on a campus, it's more like 30 And as you can see from this image, uh, a lot of times those parking tickets just pile up and people don't pay very much attention to them at all. Um, residents could have up to three permits to use for themselves and their guests. And again, just as with overnight, we will have an opportunity uh, to let folks know if there are going to be people there for more than two hours. Obviously, there will be exemptions and exceptions. We've heard a lot from the residents of Elliott Arms, for an example. These are individuals who are living in an apartment that was built probably in the 1920s. It was one of the first multifamily homes in the city, apartments in the city of Lacrosse. They don't have adequate off-street parking. We don't mean to penalize them. There are ordinances that we could model this from that say for structures built before that don't have adequate parking, this is the way that we will designate uh, the availability of residential parking permits. So thank you for listening. I hope that you have a better understanding of the rationale for some of our ideas as well as for the specifics. And if you would take just a few minutes to complete the survey that we provided for you, uh, we'll give you a few minutes to do that and then we'll move on to the public hearing the listening session uh, in just about five minutes.